to the fourth episode of Hill TV. This episode features a Ram of the Week interview, footage from our annual food fair, and to start off with, an interview with Mr. Barry Scott from Monday Celebrations. In celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, students had the pleasure of hosting Mr. Barry Scott, the founder and producing artistic director of the American Negro Playwright Theater at Tennessee State University. Mr. Scott is a well-known actor, writer, producer, director, and motivational speaker. In the morning, students observed Ain't Got Long to Stay Here, a moving performance by Mr. Scott, followed by a workshop he led in the afternoon titled Courage to Lead. You know, after finishing uh, performing here at the Hill School, I was very impressed with the reaction of the students receiving uh, the program, my performance. But I, many times now I say it's not a performance anymore, it's a witnessing, it's my testimony, it's my, my amen. Um, I am excited by the response that I get, particularly the response I got here. Uh, the knowing, the, the, the detail, understanding the detail of speeches and consequences of words. It's so refreshing uh, coming from a, a background of giving the speeches so many times and having people come back with, he had a dream, Martin had a dream, he was the great dreamer. It was so much more than that. I think this generation has caught fire with that understanding. Who would say the future? By a showing of hands, who would say the present? <coughs> By a showing of hands, who would say the past? Okay, past, you lose. <laughs> so it's a runoff between the future and the present. So let's vote again. Which candle burns the brightest? By a showing of hands. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, the, the thing about Martin Luther King that I appreciate so much is that he's not just a black hero. Martin King is a hero. He's the personification of hero. He got in a lot of trouble for taking up the mantle for humanity, particularly in, um, in the 60s with the Vietnam War. It may be the very thing that led to his, his end because he no longer was speaking out on a quote unquote black issue. I think this is why uh, Martin is recognized globally in China, you know, in, in Russia, in, in all over the world. In, in <sighs> Martin has become this figure of hope, uh, this figure representing real justice and, and real equality and, and genuine righteousness. And this is why we rem remember him. I think particularly in America, for the first time, he's being embraced for who he really is, not was, but who he really is. And that's exciting for me because I, I didn't see this 10 years ago. Uh, this is an exciting time. Martin talked many times about there comes a time when time itself is ready for a change. We're at that time. We're looking at great sweeping changes in America and the world. And Martin King's philosophy is, is, the, is the heroism that's going to usher in that new way, in that new time. But it was kind of necessary to really think about it because we didn't have this 20 years from now. We have to have to cope with it in some way or another, whether it's against one race or another or certain religion or any other ethnic group. The, the civil rights ways and uh, methods uh, for demonstration, be they peaceful, nonviolent, uh, the gay movement, the women's movement, anyone's movement. And I think that's a compliment. Uh, Martin King adopted and adapted, you know, philosophies he got from Mahatma Gandhi, you know, and, and Gandhi from the teachings of Christ. Uh, while a lot of people, even during King's time, you may know this whole strategy of uh, nonviolence um, was not a strategy for King. It was the answer. It was the solution for him. And, and while his generals in his, in his ranking, they would not commit violence because it was the strategy. I'm not going to be nonviolent because that's not what we do. And Martin believed in turning the other cheek. It was a spiritual approach to a, a problem. He was fighting fire with water, not, not with fire. So uh, I, I think it's, it makes sense that people would try things that work. 
I'm, I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm not angry with people for doing things at work. That's a good sign. It's a sign of intelligence. If, if one would closely examine through photographs the civil rights movement, you will clearly see that it was not just a black movement. There are many white faces. Uh, it was not just a youth movement. While people will talk about Birmingham and the young people in Nashville and sit in demonstrations that, were, that galvanized the movement, if you, if you carefully look at the, the photographs and do your research, you will see uh, decidedly uh, Jewish presentation, you know, representation there. You'll see older people, younger people, female, uh, people who were stars, white and black. Um, it was a time that was ready for itself. And it had not a lot to do with Martin King's organizational abilities because he was very much the kind of general who led from the moment, which made him very difficult to, uh, to strategize against. He would plan one thing, but something else would come up. He would, he would lean towards what was available and what was being presented. He was constantly late. I'm not advocating to be late. But if someone stopped Martin, he didn't have a big entourage around him. There were some people. Uh, and, and that's why he knew after Kennedy was assassinated, he knew that he, that was when he said, I won't live to see 40. If they can't protect the president, I know that my days are numbered. And he started preparing people. So there's, there were a lot of people, black, white, young, old, rich, poor, from every walk of life, kings, queens, dukes, presidents, governors, mayors, uh, sharecroppers, people who well, had, a, had at first had uh, affinities with uh, race groups who had saw something in King but couldn't couldn't embrace him publicly, but privately lent their support. Now that's the thing, if you search in your research and you see all these people who make these contributions, it is not a black thing. Black history is world history. And, and American history figures largely into that. That tells. It's Hill TV. <laughs> Say hello to Hill TV. Hey, What's up, Hill guys? TV? We're Jewish, we're making Japanese food. Okay, That's how it goes. What is that? Uh, it's Connie salad. It's um, basically kosher crab is how we're describing it. Right. Hello. Um, hey. Sugar, oatmeal, chocolate chip, and super noodles. What do you guys have there? Cookies. Cookies? What type of cookies? Sugar cookies. Mm -hmm. And basically our oatmeal chocolate chip. Nice. And those are snicker noodles. Alright, thanks. <laughs> hey guys, say hello to Hill TV. Hi. What, what do you guys have there? Um, we have a bunch of mini cupcakes. Mm -hmm. We have Oreo, marshmallow, vanilla, and then red velvet. Uh, nice. Thanks. It's okay. yep. Say hello to Hill TV. What do you guys have there? Crab soup. Crab cakes. Crab cakes over here. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Hey guys, say hello to Hill TV. What's up? As you can clearly see, I'm enjoying these spoonfuls of rice. Yeah, it's rather important to the day. We don't have our barbecue yet, so we're kind of sad. But, uh, you don't have your barbecue? Alright, I'll come back later. Yeah, I'll come back.